Loading for a trip like this is always chaotic. We work so many hours, loading seems to be the last thing we, we think about. So it's always 11, 12 o'clock at night, um, slamming the last final touches on the cars and uh, getting everything stuffed in the trailer for early morning departure. Well, you know, just a little garage lathe action to get the socket to fit. It's always a ton of stuff to do and it's stressful trying not to forget anything, but then, you know, we're heading up for a weekend of fun. So it's always a pretty good time. It's a lot of work, but we wouldn't have it any other way. Rolling into the cinders is pretty cool. See the black rock everywhere, see all the super cool trails just weaving and bobbing through the trees. It looked like a blast. We rolled up on the Sims Carver camp. Those guys were already there. Um, they were already out having a bunch of fun. And uh, so we decided to join the party. Jacob Carver. I'm a professional off-road racer for Factory Polaris RZR. I work a day job like many other people uh, as a construction project manager. Well, I'm Brandon Sims. Uh, I race professionally for Polaris as their factory racer. Uh, I'm also a uh, technician at my dad's automotive repair business as my day job. So basically I, I live two lives and have two different jobs. So the Cinders is about an hour and a half north of where I live in Flagstaff, Arizona. It's very mountainous, lots of pine trees, lots of um, you know interesting terrain. The hills are really tall there and there's pine trees everywhere. So uh, it's a different kind of experience, uh, but the only thing I can relate it to similarly or a little bit is uh, the sand dunes. So when we first showed up, we headed out to $100 Hill, which is you know one of the biggest hills in the Cinders that's kind of an iconic uh, landmark in the OHV area. This area is basically where all the, the guys go to go try to climb this mountain. And it is extremely huge. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, we kind of set up a little, a little wager between Sims and I on who was gonna make it up the hill first. So we got Jake and Brandon to, to race up it. Um, you know, friendly bet who can make it up the highest. Uh, they both took off and uh, neither one of them made it very far. Uh, I went first and unfortunately I didn't quite make it, but thought that I would win. I thought that my tires were a little bit better set up for the cinders, but uh, I soon found out that I was off on that one. I closed my eyes and floored it in reverse, and this is where I ended up. <laughs> up in a tree and uh, basically got stuck there until everybody had to come rescue me while I was stranded in the car. There was actually a, a tree that had fallen and it was broken off and basically uh, we had to, you know, figure out a way to get him around that. Watch out, Dan! Hey, Dan, watch out! Watch out, Dan! Watch out, Dan! <laughs> it's insane the pace these guys run race or play they're just wide open throttle wherever they go wheel to wheel and they're just battling back and forth it's so fun it's so neat to watch yeah the nature of our riding is always like that i mean we'll be We'll be full blown in a, a group ride at the dunes with 25 cars and all of a sudden someone sees a jump and then they're gone and they're on the radio saying, hey guys, I found a jump over here.
it's pretty hard to uh, get our whole group to go somewhere together. We always, you know, set out for the drags at the cinders and we find ourselves on the complete opposite side of the OHB area because we just get sidetracked. I think we started hitting it, you know, 65 was the magic number. Anything over that was getting pretty sketchy, so uh, 65 miles an hour was actually pretty good speed to hit that. not worrying about having to be somewhere, which is obviously what we're used to, you know, 24 seven with racing. So every time we get a chance to uh, go do our thing, we just, you know, do whatever we want to do. So we jumped into making lunch and then uh, went and hung out with those guys. They were they were barbecuing away. It's a, it's a super tight group of friends, and it's really neat to see. They all work really well together. They all trash talk together. You know, nobody gets butt hurt. Everybody has fun, and it was a really neat group to be a part of and kind of watch from the outside. Uh, the pit bike thing is a classic at every trip we go on, you know, whether it be the dunes or the cinders or just camping. Uh, the pit bikes are always a ton of fun and everybody just makes super bad decisions and pushes each other into uh, having a good time and, and wrecking most of the time. It was wheeling a little bit, we had Brad wheeling a little bit, and then we had Daniel doing a little wheeling, but he wasn't very good at it, so he, was, he struggled just to stay on the bike. Oh my god! Try again! We headed out to this super nasty whoop section. They were they were good sized whoops. They were spaced pretty far apart. Big two foot, three foot whoops. And we're gonna put those guys in a good old fashioned drag race down a whoop three, section and see what happens. Two, one, go. Obviously the first thing you're worried about is, is wadding yourself up, but you're also worried about taking out the guy next to you because you're so close. When you get to a spot like that, I mean these whoops are deep, two feet at least, and for I would say at the minimum a quarter to a half mile long, I mean straight. And we're hitting them, I think I was doing 74 to 75 through them, 75 miles an hour, and at that speed it's all you've got, just keep the car straight. runs basically Jake got two out of the three so technically Jake won that one and uh, I lost yeah so basically Jake won two I lost one so yeah he won what Sims and Carver didn't know is we were gonna try and rope them into doing a little time attack deal on this huge berm track that's in the cinders You rolled. I can't wait to make fun of you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this one's gonna be a bitch. Hey, we're gonna need you guys. Definitely f sent it that time. A for effort. Roll us over. Hey, I didn't say one more time. 
<laughs> so we came out to the berm track here in the cinders and old Kyle over there said that uh, he wanted to get a good shot of us coming around that corner so I tried to go above and beyond and uh, came a little hot and put it on a side in this berm so it's pretty cool didn't hurt the car and I think we're good for uh, to keep going berm track is super huge it's probably a half to three quarters of a mile long 20 plus turns some of them are really big and really deep you really got to be on the throttle all the way through it and carry a lot of speed to get some good times um, there's a few whoop sections in there uh, and it was going to make things interesting uh, we we're also going to throw a wild card in brandon bunch our photographer had uh, bumblebee which is the 2019 can-am maverick sport um, we we're going to toss him in the ring see if he can hang with the uh, the big polarises and the professional race car drivers me, on the other hand, I was gonna hang back. I was gonna be the official timer and the award ceremony giver outer. But these guys didn't know that at this point. So we hit the we hit the berm track and we had some fun. Uh, we talked some smack, obviously, and uh, and we got a little bit of pre-running in. There's only one way to start a fire. You put a bunch of wood there, and then you pour gas all over it, and you make a little stream, and then you light the stream on fire. So off-road racers, they have tools inside these fancy trucks. We're media. This is how we roll. Bam! You want your ruffles? We got your ruffles. You want your bread to make your bologna sandwich? We got your bread to make your bologna sandwich. You want chips and salsa? We got you. And then when you're uh, slightly intoxicated, we got the uh, Flamin' Hot Cheetos. With Once the fire was lit, um, it was time for dinner. You know, in true UTV Sports Magazine fashion, uh, we bring tacos, at least to the fun events. Um, Moab, we do a big taco party every year, and so we decided to do tacos for everybody up in the cinders. Um, we bring special carne asada from, uh, from down here in Havasu with all the fixings, um, and we, we went all out. So we had an awesome taco dinner while everybody sat around the campfire and BS, um, you know, Lots of fun stories from racing. That's it. These guys live and breathe Polaris's and UTVs and racing. It's their life. Um, you know, instead of sitting around talking about work or talking about girlfriends or talking about whatever, um, they sit and talk about races, past races, upcoming races, you know, what they're doing to their car to make them better. Um, you know, and as big of competitors as they are, they're helping each other make, it, make small tweaks on their car to be faster. You know, they want each other to succeed and they want each other to win, you know, and then their whole group, their whole crew is also their pit crew. So those guys are hanging out, BSing just the same. You know, they're helping, they're helping with the conversation and talking about races and talking about things that happened in the past, you know, talk about all the shenanigans from the road. So it was a good, it was a good campfire chat and uh, it was a fun to be around. As the night progressed, uh, the boys got a little antsy and decided it was time for a night ride. Uh, so they strapped in and uh, and it was dark. It was really dark. There wasn't much moon and whatever moon was there, the uh, tree canopy made disappear essentially. Um, so they jumped in the car. Uh, both cars are equipped with Baja Designs lights and so they flipped all of those on, uh, which basically makes it day again.
Hey, so we found the sweet berm track last night and did some laps in it. You guys want to do some time trials? I would love to do some time trials on this berm track. Jake, you in? Yeah, I'm in for sure. Who's going to win? Me, obviously. Ready? I'm just probably going to roll it. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> For the second hey, time this you weekend. You don't have 200 pounds in the passenger seat. You should be solid today. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely my handicap. All right, so we're going to throw the wild card and Brandon and Bumblebee in it. Who's, what do you think? Well, I think Bumblebee's probably got it. You think? Only if Brandon's driving. <laughs> Did you just the mullet, I think the mullet the adds mullet? 10 horse. <laughs> it's the mullet. Are right, you ready? Yeah. Oh, cut you, son. All right, <laughs> <laughs> you got cut. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was that? Uh, now I'm off. <laughs> well, I lost all of you. it. <laughs> Jake, you want to go first or second? I'll let him go first. course wasn't very long as far as when you're looking at it from a, a time standpoint so it's really tough to you know hundreds of a second or thousands of a second could be the difference between winning and losing I didn't jump into it. I knew I could beat those guys. It wasn't a big deal, so I didn't need to go ahead and win and, and take all the glory from them. Uh, so I let them do their thing. All right, so in third place, fastest lap of 30 seconds and 30.68, Mr. Brandon Bunch and Bumblebee. Great job. Expected. <laughs> Thank Bumblebee. you. Bumblebee. All right, that a boy. And. In first place, <laughs> with the fastest lap of 29.24, Holy smokes, oh. only a second difference? Mr. Brandon Sims. You obviously rolled, um, but you won, so we'll give you that. So it's a win-win. <laughs> Losing is never a good feeling, but uh, to be honest, you know, if, if I'm going to lose, at least it's to one of my good friends. You know, I carry the same thing through all of our desert racing. If you know, if I'm going to lose, I at least want to see one of my friends do really well, and uh, you know, it doesn't hurt so bad that way. Uh, all right, high five. Hey, you get your high five. Yeah. You want me to go roll it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, baby, I got a winning award and a loser award. Basically, when I do these trips sometimes, you know, these off time trips up in the mountains, whatever it may be, uh, to the river, wherever it is, you know, a lot of times I need to just kind of uh, get away from, you know, the, the, the race prepping that I'm doing constantly and actually get out of the shop and, you know, because I, I need to actually kind of just mellow out and, and actually not think about that for a while. So it's nice to relax a little bit and that way when I go back home, I'm able to hit it hard again, you know, I'm not forgetting anything. It, it kind of like resets my mind, uh, just gives me a, a clean slate to start with. Sometimes when I'm actually on these trips, um, I will actually make a list of stuff I need to do when I get home uh, because it's a little e easier for me to think cleanly or clearly and uh, figure out what I need to do when I get home. So I'll make a list. Uh, sometimes I get a chance to send some emails to some important stuff that I've done. It allows me just to have a little bit more time to think about everything that's going on and, and uh, when I get home, that way I can uh, hit it hard and, and uh, get prepared for the next race. 
it's always kind of the worst part of the trip, but uh, you know, we're super thankful for all of the stuff that we get to do. Uh, you know, the, the racing has taken us on crazy journeys and you know, crazy camping trips, crazy uh, you know, weekends with friends. And we know that you know, they're, they're gonna be back soon and, and we're gonna be doing it all over again in you know, a few weeks time. So um, it's always a little bit of a bummer, but at the end of the day, we know that it's not over, so it's fun. It's time to start planning. I know Sims and Carver already talked about Camp Razor and I know those dudes go hard there. We had a quick glimpse at it last year and uh, we had a blast with them. So hopefully we can we can hit Camp Razor again with them. Can't wait for the future. Can't wait to see what kind of adventures we go on next and, and looking forward to the next one. Hopefully no cameras are running. <laughs>